Hey guys, Mad Phoenix here with how to kill Skeletron Prime in Terraria 1.3. Because you're watching this video, I know you want to know how to kill Skeletron Prime. So first off, you're gonna need armor. And the basic armor for any pre-Plantera boss is always Auriculum or Titanium. If you have Auriculum in your armor, I in your world, I recommend Auriculum. If you do not, I recommend Titanium. Just because Titanium gives you that extra defense boost, while Auriculum gives you that attack boost, and not to mention it has its, uh, its ambient attack. So, anyways, with for weapons, what you're gonna want is you're gonna want mostly melee weapons. Now, uh, you might be saying, I'm a mage, or I'm a ranger, I don't go close range. Well, even if you're one of those, but you can still have melee weapons. They just have to be simply quicker, or they can use mana or shoot projectiles. But the one I recommend for all classes is Defeated Bognox. Now this is dropped by Crimson Chests, or Crimson Mimics, and does 80 damage and has the fastest attack speed in the game. And this is all, to, all over very helpful for your feats in killing Scaletron Prime and will help you even when you're not trying to kill a pre planetary hard mode boss. So, you have your Fetid Bognox, but that's all you have, so what, what else do you want? You're gonna want the most powerful yo-yo you can get. Now, the most powerful for, like, pre-Moon Lord is the Aikathugu, but you, chances are, if you need this tutorial, you will have already gotten into hard mode without killing the moon lord though you will not have killed the moon lord so if you, as a re, as a melee based you're gonna want a flail i used the blue moon and, and the anchor mo mainly i also had the phase blade and i had a uh, yo-yo i do not remember the yo-yo i used tridents are always helpful tridents and rotted forks whichever you prefer and I also had the Sweetheart Necklace, which allowed me to release bees whenever I was attacked. Now, if you're a summoner, I do not know much about summoners, I do apologize, but I cannot tell you what you're going to need. But for mages, you will want the Crystal Storm, a bee gun, the Flame Lash or mis Magic Missile, Flame Lash is better, and both will be kind of hard to use, but you'll be able to use them. You're going to want a Nimbus Rod and a Crimson Rod. And then a Staff if you really find it necessary, but I do not. And then if you're a Ranger, you're going to want your Mini Shark, if not a Mega Shark. You're going to want to have a lot of Explosive Bullets, Explosives or Icker Bullets. Um, if you have the Crimson, use the equivalent of Icker Bullets. Or if you don't have Crimson, use the equivalent of Icker Bullets. Now, the really the only thing you'll need as a Ranger is the Mini or Mega Shark, because that, unless you have the Uzi. But the Uzi, if you don't have it, you'll really only need the Mega Shark. So, in fighting this daunting foe, known as Skeletron Prime, it's actually a very basic fight, and it's like I said, um, Fethit Bognox is very helpful because he's going to be very close range. He's going to be wanting to hit you. He's not going to want to stay away from you and use ranged attacks. So I recommend building a house like this, or similar to this, because when he enters, his head will be able to do damage, his close-up will be able to do damage, but his ranged weapons will not. So you'll be able to uh, knock out his pr uh, prime laser and prime la uh, prime cannon in no time. But but his prime saw and, pri and prime vice, you will also be able to knock out fairly quickly. And his head will always be fairly close to you, so you will be able to do that as well. But this is why I always recommend melee over mage and range for this, is because you can just hold this down and he will be down pretty quickly now for summoning him what you're gonna want is you're gonna want three souls of night three souls of light 30 bones and six lead 
Now I will be back in a second with with the materials uh, that are required, and then I will show you how to craft this. All right, so I have the materials needed now. So normally you only need six. I happen to have nine, so I just grab them all. And then you need 30 bones, three souls of night, and three souls of light. So this will pop up. Just click it. And apparently in 1.3 you only need five bars. I excuse my mistake. I did not realize that. Um, anyway, so you go up to the surface whenever you want. Then at night you will be, you will be able to summon him. You cannot summon him until night. So I, until it's night time, I will discuss the accessories I recommend for this battle. So because you're indoors, you don't really need frost spark boots. And chances are you will not need um, your wings, but I mean they're helpful just in case. And even <coughs> even if you do not, <coughs> excuse me, um, even if you do not need them or even use them, I recommend to have them for their prefixes. So armor gives you three three extra defense, and then if you're a mage, arcane gives you twenty more mana. If you are not a mage, you can change that to warding or whatever you want. Now, I recommend the Celestial Shell, or at least the Moon Amulet, because that will allow you to turn into a werewolf at night. And being a werewolf increases your damage output. And it decreases... It increases your de damage output and decreases your damage intake. So that is also helpful. Now, if you have it, you can use the Ox Shield. If you do not have it, use any of its subsidiary shields, which are the obsidian shield and the cobalt shield. The cobalt shield you can earn pretty quickly and the obsidian shield is just that with obsidian. So basically you'll have, you just need some sort of shield with the warding prefix. Now if you are a mage, you're going to want a mana flower. If you are not a mage, you can change it out for a destroyer emblem, uh, any sort of emblem. And if you don't want any, like, boss bar boots or any mantles, you can um, swap it out for damage, crit, criticals, whatever you want. Um, I will show you some of the ones I recommend down here. So, accessories to... Now, hooks are not, recommend, uh, are not recommended for this battle, seeing as how it's very close range. And so basically, you will not need any of these except maybe a horseshoe balloon. If for some reason you fall out of your house and it's in the sky, that will help for negating your fall damage. And then there's a the cobalt shield. If you're a ranger, a ranger emblem, if you don't want crossbar boots or your nebula, nebula mantle. Feral claws are always good, and titan glove is even better. Um, Counterweights always help if you are using a yo-yo. Panic necklaces aren't really recommended since you're in such a small space. Lava waiters you definitely don't need. A moonstone can help because, it, as you can see, it says increases all stats if you are during the night, and you will be fighting at night, therefore they will increase the stats. You can also if you are fighting in water with a celestial shell because that turns you into a mermaid, jellyfish necklace won't hurt. But yet again, you're fighting in a house, so chances are you will not need that. So basically, there's not really much to the accessories. So I will be back once it's nighttime so you guys can see the battle. And I will be using mainly Feated Bognox and I and only Feated Okay, so as you can see, it is now nighttime, and so I am gonna just enter my little arena house. It's also Blood Moon, so this will be a challenge, but whatever. So, you're gonna wanna summon Skull Trump Prime using the mechanical skull, just take it out and click. Now, I'm only using Feet Hit Bob Knox, so as you can see, he brushes in. So you start off by just kind of being here. So you just kind of continue doing damage. Now the one problem with the Fusion Bob Knox is that it is extremely close to watch. Like, you, you, you have 
have to literally be in him to be able to use it. And I am semi failing, so I'm just gonna show you his tactics for that and not really try to kill him. But so he'll focus far away with those, the laser and the cannon. Um, well, you're gonna want to avoid his head mostly. His vice doesn't really do much damage. goes back down. But anyways, there's not really much to the battle. The one problem I had there was that, well, somehow something tripped my traps, which wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, that's there. Never mind. Um, I was thinking it tripped something up, so the trap was just not damaged. Um, the one problem, yeah, like I said, the one problem with the Tell me what I can do better, tell me what I can do worse, um, and just give me some feedback and I will be seeing you.